I then I suddenly realized what I did. Let me go get my beer. Okay. Okay. Mm-hmm. What's happening? What's happening? We are live. Yeah. Here we go. I like this camera. This is a little bit nice and clearer than the other yeah, one. You look a little clearer there now. Right. All right. Mm-hmm. Got mine a little more zeroed in, but uh, welcome everybody to another craft beers going wild. All right. So, so we got Crunch, 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 Kretschmar in Chicago. <laughs> <laughs> Come to you live from Chicago, yeah. and I am and I am double teamed today by a Rod J and a Ron J. <laughs> so I I'm getting hit by two J's on the side. So welcome, Ron. Ron is from Louisiana. Yes, I am. Can you hear me? I can hear you. Down in New Orleans, right? Uh, close to New Orleans. Can you see my face? I can see you there. Okay. I was having trouble seeing my icon. I mean, I only see my icon. I don't see my face. But okay. Uh, I'm from Louisiana, and I'm about 25. My town is about 20 miles west of New Orleans. Okay. Oh, okay. And then I myself am over in uh, northern Kentucky, ba- basically on the Ohio border with Cincinnati. So, um, nice little area, a lot of beer around here, so doing what we can. So we're actually broadcasting on YouTube, Google Plus Hangout, or Google Hangout. I've actually got it on Periscope. I think Crunch is running something on Periscope as well. So yeah. we're actually trying some different I got the Periscope going. Yeah, so... We are rocking and rolling, so tonight we're going to talk about India Pale Ales, and each of us have brought different ones uh, to kind of talk about or sample, and I don't know how much you guys want to get into a little bit. You know, I kind of put some notes down here for people that might not be familiar with India Pale Ales. You know, we see them everywhere now. They're all over the place, all the different locations. Um, It's kind of the biggest category to a point. It's kind of taken over a lot of the beer market, it seems. Right. But haven't they also, haven't it also, because it's gotten so big, haven't they also started uh, breaking it down into uh, certain categories? You know, I'm starting to see, you know, the IPAs being broken into like little segment, you know, segments. Yeah, it's kind of interesting because you have the various subsets. So if you look at India Pale Ales, essentially you have three categories that are kind of the main focus. Those are the ones that are kind of judged by the BJCP, that's the uh, right. English IPA, American IPA, and Imperial IPA. And then you have the other various ones, like you're mentioning, that take up some of the other areas. So you look at something like the English IPA is usually around 5 to 7.5% ABV. It's kind of the range they look for. You look at the American mm-hmm. IPA, that's about 55 to 7.5%. The Imperial right. IPA is just the bigger American IPA, right? So that's Seven and a half to ten percent. IBUs, you know, you kick up a little bit more. You do have a little bit of a crossover. English IPA about forty to sixty. You look at okay. uh, American IPA about forty to seventy, and you look at Imperial IPA, Imperial IPA about sixty to one hundred and twenty. So those are kind of the guidelines. But then within those inner workings, you have all the other different things taking place with some of the breweries. So out of those three categories, that's what the key focus is usually when they go to competition. But then we know, like you've mentioned, Crunch. You have the other areas, right? So you have the Belgian style IPA. Um, right. right. An example of that would be like Rage and Bitch Belgian style IPA from Flying Dog. You have the India Session Ale, which we see a lot of Session Ales now in the marketplace. You Founders All Day IPA is a big one in that category. You have the White IPA, where you have something like the Shoots Chain Breaker, which is actually one of my favorite ones in that white area. You have the Wild IPA, something like Wild Devil from Victory. You have Red IPA, something like Hop. Top Head Red from Green Flash Brewing, Rye IPA, Red Rye PA Founders. Then you get into mm-hmm. stuff. You have like a, you have spiced or herbed IPA, like basil IPA from Anderson Valley. Not to mention you have the black IPA, like back in Black or 21st Amendment. So a lot of wide range in IPA areas, and we'll probably see other stuff probably come out of that. Right? People may start mixing stuff together. Who knows? That's just the way the beers tend to go. You just um, you get in there and you experiment. So. That's kind of a roundabout of the IPA market and some of the things to take a look at out there, but a lot of people aren't familiar familiar with them outside of the hoppiness. That's what they kind of associate everything with on the IPAs. 
All right. I like Ron Jay's uh, philosophy there. He just listens to your cracks open and starts going into the show. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey, there's, nothing wrong with, there's nothing wrong with cracking open a beer. So. <laughs> That's what it's all about. All right. So what do you got there, Ron? What, kind well, of, what do you have there, Ron? What are you putting out? Well, I, I'm looking at, and this is the fourth India Pale Ale. <laughs> I've had today because I was doing a bunch of reviews today. <laughs> I had, yeah, I had the Brooklyn, the Defender. Okay. I, oh, okay. I had uh, Samuel Adams Grapefruit IPA. I'm having this Bell's Two Hearted IPA, and the one I had. Oh, I had a Two Hearted one. Yep. Yeah, that's one of the old classics that we just yeah. got in the last two weeks. And what is the one I wrote it down here? The other one I had this morning was. Oh, uh, go west with an exclamation mark. Go west. Oh yeah, I saw you review now. Wow. That was a good one that you took a look at there. Yeah, from Anchor in California. So, <clears throat> okay, it's been a whole day of success because um, the, I think the lowest score I gave was an A minus. Mm -hmm. From an oh. A minus, so excellent to most excellent, and I was very pleased. And this two-hearted ale, this thing. Gets the lowest score it gets on Beer Advocate and Rate Beer is an outstanding, and mm. it goes up to world class, the highest possible score a beer can get on the wow. place. It gets 100 out of 100 on Rate Beer and 100 out of 100 for the style. And for a dollar ninety nine a wow. single bottle, that's unbeatable. It's yeah. really fantastic. Yeah, I'm a big fan of the Two Hearted Ale. I really enjoy that one also. Mm. And it's definitely for the value you get. It's a nice bang for the buck, kind of like some of the Sierra Nevada products for what they put out there. Oh, yeah. Right, right, right. So what what are the characteristics you're getting out of that one right there, there Ron? Well, <clears throat> um, you know, this beer is one of the old, I, I think it's one of the old school IPAs, right? Kind of like the traditional 7% alcohol. It has, uh, and, and like I said, old school, but new school for me because we just got it in the last two weeks. But a lot of people have been getting it for a long, long time. Okay. And it's got, um, you, you know, there's your sweet white bread, um, yeah. sugariness. The bitterness is noticeable, but it's not overwhelming. It's, um, it's not like an English IPA where the bitterness is quite low relative to what we get in America. So mm -hmm. it's sort of a middle. I think Rod J probably knows. It's sort of a middle ground. It's not like Sierra Nevada's Torpedo, you know, that's super bitter. Right. right. Or uh, Lagunitas uh, Hop Stupid, or what's that other one I just had that was 100 plus IBU? Those are like jacked up bitterness. This one's mm -hmm. more like it's there, but it's not overwhelming. It's just, it's an hour, right? Okay, that's good. All right, all right. And that one there, you know, uh, you said that, uh, yeah, you said that you had that one before, or is this your first time with it? I've had it twice before. Um, all right. I bought it once to do a review. Uh, no, I had it once before. I, I'm thinking of a different one. There was a different one I bought twice because the first review, I didn't like the way it came out. And then I did right. a second review. And, but the beer was still not good. But uh, but this one, <laughs> yeah, that was one from Bell's that I wasn't pleased with. And, but I noticed that a lot wow. of, yeah, and a lot, I noticed a lot of other written reviews were saying the same thing I was saying. And uh, uh, some of the video reviews had the same complaint. So I thought, okay, I, I, I like to check myself and see if what I'm saying is way off track. But then when right. I check, I find that, no, it's right in line with what everybody else is saying, but um, that was their uh, their stout. But yeah. this one here is I uh, okay. Yeah, I think the only one you ever scared me on, Ron, was the uh, the Bourbon County stout that time. I thought you were taking it a little too hard <laughs> on the Bourbon County stout when you had it, and <laughs> I, I didn't want you going into therapy after that was. Wait, now wait, that was the stout or the Bourbon County? That uh, Bourbon County brand stout. We were talking, and you. Thought maybe you missed something, so you were going back to check it out again. And I thought the one that I was complaining about was the Bourbon County Barley Wine style ale. Was it? 
I thought it was the stout. Maybe it was the barley wine because we have both of them. Yeah, the stout was awesome. I gave that one a perfect score. No, it was the barley wine style mm -hmm. ale. And I said, oh, if you watch the video, I made two videos. I did one in the morning, and then my daughter came over later, and we did a second follow-up. And we, it was just something wrong with it. And the first video, I, I shook. I was like, <laughs> I, said, <laughs> I said, there's something wrong with this beer. You know, it just made me, like, shake. And um, it tasted like coconut, and um, which is not that unusual for that. But it was, right. it was all kind of wrong things with it. I said, oh, no, I, I'd have to go rewatch it. And I, and it blew up out the bottle and everything. And so then, all of a sudden, this chatter started. People saying, "You know, that beer was infected." And, and you know, but not all the batches. Right, because I had mine and mine oh. was fine. Yeah. Some people had it, and it was fantastic. So uh, I contacted right. I contacted Bourbon County, and they said, "Okay, they needed to know what batch number." I said, "Well, look, I threw the bottle away. I never knew that this was going to be like some big story." And <laughs> but they they said yeah, and they, I told the lady well watch my video and I think they had already watched it but the the lady at the office she was saying yeah 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 and they were looking through the video and they were saying yeah yep yeah, that's it you got a bad one and um they sent me a t shirt they sent me <laughs> yeah. the first thing they asked me was would you like your money back or a t shirt. <laughs> 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 I said, I think I for the money, but um, this whole conversation was at least 30 minutes because it was very detailed. Yeah. They admitted that the beer was spoiled, infected, and uh, well, you know, that just showed the great uh, you know, customer service that the small little uh, you know, breweries like that have, as opposed to could you imagine if you would have done that for Budweiser? Well, wait know, a minute. Now, crunch, other, crunch, you know, bigger one. Crunch, crunch, you just I, in, crunch, you just stepped I, in. I know. <laughs> you stepped into it, and now you're gonna have to walk back. You see, I'm just sitting right. back. I'm sitting I, back. I, 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 <laughs> a little back, a little back home. But uh, you know, when you get when you get the bigger, you know, you get the bigger houses and stuff. I like how the smaller houses, you know, really do, you know, like you said, they watch your videos and stuff. The bigger houses, let's go, for example, Goose Island, you know, they would not have, uh, you know, probably watched the video or, you know, had that kind of response. Well, wait, this and, was you know, Goose Island. This was Goose Island. Yeah, it was Goose Island on this. Oh, that was Goose Island. Let me yeah. stop. Oh, okay. Let me stop you well, before too much damage is done. <laughs> yeah, no kidding. No Okay. They're actually well, owned by AB and Bev. <laughs> they're actually owned by AB. They're owned by AB. They're owned by AB. They're owned by AB. They're owned by Anheuser Busch and Bev. So, like uh, Anheuser Busch, right? Yeah. Right. So they're like the biggest right. house. The biggest <laughs> house. Yeah. But they. they well, uh, I was just, you know, I, I was just trying to give kudos out to you know the fact that you know that they uh, did that for their uh, you know for their um, department there. That they actually oh, took yeah. the time and the care, you know, actually for you know one person. It wasn't like you know a whole bar or something. You know, it was you know one person. They really took care of you. And they went in, and I said, you know, like I said, kudos, you know, to the people on that. Yes, uh, so you know, I I did in business like that. I did have my receipt, and um, but I asked the lady because the questions she was asked, she was asking me were strange in a way. Because it was Goose Island, Goose Island, you know, Bourbon County, and I was saying, okay, okay. Yeah. At, the, at the end of the conversation, it was just the way she was asking the questions and the and the way they were constructed. I said, uh, I want to ask you a question. Hmm. She said, okay. I said, are you calling me from? Oh no, I was on the line with her. I had called that number. I said, am I on the on the phone with Chicago, Goose Island, or am I talking to you in St. Louis? She said, uh, I'm at corporate. I said, that's where? Uh, St. Louis. I said, oh, okay. So it was at the right. you know, Budweiser Brewery. But, yeah. uh, right. <laughs> right. but anyway, they did send me my $11 back. And um, it was. Yeah, uh, I mean, that's a good deal. They were like 13 here. But yeah, it was ten ninety nine here. But um, I kind of got it off track, I guess, because this is supposed to be about IPAs, not. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was glad to see you out of council. Yeah. So, <laughs> <laughs> but um, you know, when you when you enjoy IPA, 
you know, a lot of times I talk about different things about different glassware and stuff. Is there a favorite glassware you usually have for IPA? Either. I've been using this tulip glass because okay. they keep recommending it's a tulip glass. And I never had a good tulip glass. Mm -hmm. but someone bought this for me, and I said, well, this is like the perfect one, so I keep using it. And, um, it works fine, you know. Um, mm -hmm. I need to get a snifter, though. I don't have a snifter. I kept looking for one. I cannot find one. Now you got all these beers, and you have no snifter around? <laughs> <laughs> I told you, you know, some people to do is go to, um, and if you want to save a few bucks, this is a good way to do it. Hit some of like the little thrift store or charity stores. They go through these estate sales, and people get this stuff into it. Right. And I bought. A, a good amount of glasses just from there where you're getting like a snifter or something like that and it might only cost you like 50 cent or a dollar. I know. I keep looking. Right. I can't find it. I, I have so many glass. I have, if you saw at my house how many glasses I have, you'd be like, what's wrong with you? So, um, and then I have everything but that. I have all these little cognac glasses. I've been doing these brandy reviews, so I drank them out of the different cognac glasses, you know, and I have Pilsner glasses. And I don't have a snifter, but anyway. <laughs> One of the things with you know glassware you mentioned like recommended and just for people that might not be as familiar with IPA that'll check this video out, um, you know there's different glassware they do different things for different beers. Now you can enjoy a beer in any glass and you'll still be able to drink it, right. but sometimes it's about enhancing it, right? So when you're dealing with IPAs, one thing you can do is work with pine glasses like the No Nick. Those are good ones. They talk about as being for just about any of the three types of IPAs, the English, the American, or the Imperial. They also talk about the snifter glass being more so for the Imperial, but the tulip being good for the Imperial as well. And the other glass mm -hmm. that I talk about, which I'm not a huge fan of, and Crunch knows this, is probably the American pint glass, because every bar that kind of slaps them together, and it's just like there's nothing really with it to really enhance it like it should be for some of these. So those are kind of some of the glasses take a look at. Now, for me, I'm going to actually, I have, Ron's going to say, you're, you're, you're just stingy, because i got like two snifters for my two beers. So, <laughs> <laughs> so that's what I'm going to do. I prefer like using snifter type glass for them. I actually no. have a glass downstairs, which I probably could have brought up for this show, and I didn't think about it. It's actually a special glass made for IPA, where it's kind of like an upward slender, then it opens up wide. It's really unique. Um, I ended up getting it as a Christmas gift uh, earlier this year. Um but, you know, when you enjoy the beer, you want to have something that opens up the aroma because if you're running a standard keg the way it should be ran, your line should be at about 38 degrees. So right. when you get your glass and you're out somewhere, and this is where I get into, like, the frosted glass is not being a thing you should have because your glass should not be frosted. It takes away from the aroma. It takes away from the flavor. 38 degrees, you want to enjoy an IPA usually around that 40 to 50 level in that anyway. It would be perfect by the time it hits the glass and why it warms up while you're enjoying it. So just something to keep in mind out there. But, Crunch, I'm going to go ahead and let you talk about your beer that you have there, then I'll grab mine afterwards. Uh, well, I went ahead and got the Big Shoulder uh, Beer Company. I got the Hoppapalooza IPA. Uh, so, right there. Hoppapalooza. Big shoulders, are they out of Illinois as well? Yes, they are out of Illinois. Hence the uh, Papa Palooza, you know, because we get a lot of Palooza here every year, and so this is kind of like named after and you know take off of it. And up there out of um, Itasca, Illinois. So uh, you know we get a uh, you know they get a really good uh, following and a good uh, you know going around the Lollapalooza time. So. You know that's uh, that's one of their big, you know, one of the big times that this comes up. And everybody's pushing it. All the bars are pushing it. Um, I have not had it yet. This will be my first time having this, so I was uh, happy when I saw that they had it out um, at the, uh, you know, the uh, uh, store that I went to pick, you know, some up. So I grabbed it, and I'm going to go ahead and uh, give it all you can see. Got a nice uh, cloudiness into there. Okay. Well, Gold cloudiness. Then I poured this right about the time that uh, uh, Ron J. They would uh, help me out of you know, that hole that I dug there earlier. <laughs> so uh, I went ahead and I poured it then. So the head came down a little bit. 
but it's still nice frothy. Got that nice uh, soap, you know, foam on there. I like that. I like a soap, you know, head. It's got a really nice soapy head on there. Uh, really like that. It's still, you know, you see it's still uh, lacing the glass up there pretty good. So I like that. And it's got a lot of hop. I mean, that can really smell, you know, a lot of green hops in there. I mean, this is green. A little sweet. I can definitely hear, uh, smell the sweetness, you know, on there. But it's like a green. It's almost like that lawnmower uh, grass, you know, sweetness. Like a fresh cut? Yeah, like a fresh cut grass sweetness in there. So I really like that. I, you know, I like that kind of green. It reminds me of, uh, you know, Saturday morning, spending four hours, you know, mowing the lawn there in uh, Michigan. So, now from, all right, I'm going to get this. From looking at it, it looks orange to me. Well, not, yeah, it's kind of a, yeah, kind of a haze. It's kind of a hazy orange. Yeah. You know, like apricot. Right in there, yeah. That's a very Dreyfus. I'm thinking it's orange as well. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Dreyfus, come on. Hey. Get away. Uh, if you saw another dog. Saw another dog walking right by the uh, door. So you got to go show who's boss. So. But yeah, so we got there. Now we're going to get a little taste out, see what we come out on a pallet. Okay. Definitely has the orange flavor. That's for sure. It's got a nice rind flavor. It's a little dry. It's got a little dryness to it. Rind up in the uh, upper part of the lip. Got that sweetness. Uh, definitely got a nice little, um, you know, hint of sweetness in there. Um, but got that dry, it's like a dry hay um, barley in a dryness at the end, right at the finish. The finish dry, you know, comes off dry. The taste up front, sweet, and then dry in the back when it finishes off. But it's really nice. Uh, this right here, Ron, I think, uh, Ron, I, I think this is the kind that you like, you know, during those hot days. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, there. This, this is the type here. Got that rind dry up in here, a little sweet. Finishes off dry in the back, and um, really good. Like I said, I enjoy that one. On a, definitely with a, on a scale of uh, your one to five on there, I'm going to go with that one there about a uh, 4.2. Oh, wow. You on never usually go over a four. No. I, I like this one a lot because I got that, like I said, it's got that little citrus you know, flavor, which is you know, where it comes up, on the, up right. on the top lip up there. It's got that nice citrus in there, but yet that dryness I like because it, it just finishes off. It doesn't. It doesn't dry me out like I, I'm going to need another sip to, to, to quench it down. It's okay. just enough It's just enough to know that I'm still thirsty, but not. I don't need to, you know, a, a drink right away. It's really what's good. The, uh, I, I really enjoy it. Uh, what's the alcohol by volume on that? This one right here is 6%. Oh, God, that's pretty much. Uh, that's a, yeah, 6% on there. And it does not give me an IBU. Uh, here, well, it's probably nope. Not, probably, nope. No, I'd be probably about sixty. I bet you. Yeah, so it should be about that, because especially how you know, like you said, cloudy, the orangey on there. Yeah, that was a, that that was a decent looking beer. So you're saying about an A minus on that one, then? Oh yeah, definitely, because um, it has that nice flavor. It's got that little orange, but it gives it that. In my opinion, when you start getting uh, like the fruit flavor and stuff, start getting more of that summertime uh, flavor. So it's got that little orange rind flavor in there. It's got a little sweetness at the top, but then it's got that nice dry finish hay, that dry hay finish. What's in the back again? What's, really nice. what's the name? I'm sorry. What's the name? It's called Hop. It's called Hopapalooza IPA. All oh, right. So yeah. If you remember Lollapalooza, oh yeah, <laughs> that, that's what yeah, that's what this was uh, kind of taken off of the Lollapalooza thing. Okay. Uh, 
Yeah. During that time of the year, it's a big seller around here. All right, Mr. Rod J. What do we got for us, buddy? The first one I actually pulled out today is one that I haven't had for about probably a year or two, maybe. And this is actually one I did enjoy previously, and it is the Shoots, and it is the Pine Drops IPA. Not sure how familiar you guys are with that one. Big fan of the Shoots out of Bend, Oregon. Um, they've got a pretty good suite of IPAs through the shoot, so this one actually hits very nicely. It's a 6.5% ABV. It's got uh, 70 IBU, so it's really pushing that that IPA, American IPA level. I'm not even trying to look at the aroma yet or smell the aroma, and I already have it coming out of the glass, and it's already starting to get into my nose. That's how nice wow. this, this one actually brings here. <laughs> Must be another dog. <laughs> so yeah, when you get yeah. it, now when you get it here and you get it to the light, it actually has a nice golden <laughs> nice golden straw <laughs> color behind it. <laughs> what is that? Nice Ron. Oh. <laughs> What's the oh. for? <laughs> oh, I'm stand up. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> Why am I getting sabotaged by macro beer on my <laughs> <laughs> But um, uh, when you get it out, of, when you get it out, out of the light, it kind of has that orange character with it. It came out with a nice two finger head that was pretty much white all the way around. Uh, nice foaminess on the head. I know it's going to lace the glass nicely. Uh, you do have when you get it to light a little bit of clarity. It does have a chill haze on it, but you can see a lot of the bubble action. I don't think you can see it as much on here um, because of the haze, but. Um, Pretty pretty looking beer for what you'd expect an American IPA. I mean, the aroma is just pure and right out. So you look at the difference between like an American IPA and an English IPA. American IPA are led by those fruity aromas, where English IPA that's tapered down to the back end, and it's not mm -hmm. on the forefront on it. It's actually more of the kind of a more of a multi-type balance on theirs. And of course, the Imperial IPA is just ramping up the American IPA. But I get. The grapefruit out of here, I get notes like uh, <laughs> nice citrus, a nice tropical, a very nice hop experience, a very nice amount of dankness. I mean, everything you would kind of expect to have in a American IPA. Get into the taste. You get hit with a nice bitterness up front. Really hits the tip of that tongue. But the flavors open up very nicely. You start to feel it swirling around. You're getting a nice sense of the, the flavors and a good uh, duration. You know, the flavors kicking around probably average tonight to a nice long duration in that regard. I'm getting kind of a taste of a little bit of a – I used to categorize it kind of as a medicine-type taste, but I think it's more like a tangerine-type mm -hmm. taste the more I look at it now. It gets mm -hmm. – Gets nicely into the cheek area. Some IPAs don't really get up into the cheeks as much. This one really does get up there. It gets everything tingling in the mouth along those lines. And on the back end, it finishes nice and smooth, nice and crisp. Carbonation sits very well on the palate. The texture has a little bit of kind of a creaminess to it. Um, I mean, it kind of works just all around, all over. Um, body sits as a nice medium body on the tongue. This is probably one that I probably wouldn't want to have early into a, like a hot day, but at the end of it, as it starts to get into that that uh, end of another day, going into the evening, sit on the back deck. This is kind of one I could kick back and really enjoy. You know, put your feet up or, um, on the back deck. You know, whatever you're doing out there, maybe smoke a cigar or something like that along with it. It's kind of everything that I kind of expect with a lot of the American IPA beers. So the problem I run into sometimes is, okay, it gives you everything you expect, but there's so many out there kind of giving that. Is there anything that's not going to maybe pass that point a little bit more? And I would, actually, I would actually say with this one, it actually it holds well. It stacks up well. It's definitely what I would consider to be a solidly drinkable beer. Would I go would I go to a highly drinkable level, or would I just say solidly drinkable, right? So it's pleasing. It's dependable. I can go to it and always have that same experience. So I'm looking at least right. a 3.5 on it. 
Okay. Is everybody going to dig this? I don't think they will, so it's hard for me to go four or five. So I'm going to actually say this one is probably going to be more around a rating that I would give kind of as a smack dab in the middle of a four. So kind of almost oh. a in between a B plus and A minus level, maybe A minus okay. minus type level. It's just for someone that loves IPA, I think you're good. I think you would love and enjoy this one. But for someone that's just, you know, just got into IPAs or starting to get into some of that hoppiness, it may not be something that grabs them. It's kind of one that you kind of go in knowing what to look for and knowing how to enjoy it because you're kind of a master in that area type situation versus someone right. new that might say, well, that's a little too tart-like or something on the back end or it's too much of a bitterness up front type thing. But I think it holds uh -huh. very well. But I would give it a four. So that would, again, you know, take your pick B plus A minus kind of in that region in between that. But yeah, that's the right. Pine Drops IPA. I don't know if either of you have had that one before or not. No. no. Uh, I've had the Schutz beers, and they really do great beer. I just love the Schutz. Yeah. Yeah, and this is one, I guess I haven't had this for maybe like two years ago. But I had it when I was out at one of the local establishments and really did like this one. Um, probably my favorite from them, I mentioned earlier, is that Chain Breaker, which is the white IPA. That's probably one of my favorite ones they had. Uh, yeah. That's really a good one. Yeah, I saw that one there at my uh, local store, but I did not see the one that you had, the uh, pine. I did see that. So I was, I was wondering, is that kind of uh, you know a newer line that come out, or has it been out for a while? I have not seen that. It's been out for a while, but it's almost one that's a little harder to find because you can find um, the other ones they usually have a little bit easier. I'm trying to think of the one they have out there now. Um, oh. Can't think of the name offhand, um, but you can find stuff like their red chair and some of their other ones a little easier. Yeah. This oh one, yeah. Yeah, this one's a little harder to find, or it might be just still popular. It goes that fast. And the funny thing is, here we our main grocery store is Kroger, so you can make your own six packs. Well, a six pack of this is usually like eleven ninety nine on sale, usually thirteen ninety nine not on sale. Somebody stacked it into the make your own six pack area. Well, you don't make your own six pack. You get it for nine ninety nine. So it was like, okay, fill it up. <laughs> and just going to go and grab a few of those. Um, but it's definitely worth. Right, that's what. It's definitely worth picking up if you're an IPA fan. Oh yeah, but definitely I did today. I went to the old uh, build your own six pack. Yeah. Um, you can see some of the lacing now that's on the glass. I mean, it does leave behind some nice work there. Man, that looks like one I'd like to try. Can I bring up a different, uh, I mean, a topic that's part of this? Sure. Sure. Okay, because I don't want to talk too much. Um, <laughs> He's supposed to talk. <laughs> I mean, I don't want to be who like. Was, who wants to watch the people talking and you bring the mute? <laughs> I, you know what I mean? I don't want to be dumb. dumb. Now, now Ron, Ron is, just, is, it, is, this, is this segment can be sponsored by Paps Blue Ribbon? <laughs> Unfortunately, it's not, but I would appreciate it if you uh, do that. You know, they actually did send me this shirt, believe it or not. Oh, nice. Hey. Yeah, that was before I started doing video reviews. I just wrote them an email once and said some things to them, and they're like, oh, yeah, and they sent me all this stuff. But anyway, um, that was like over 10 years ago. Anyway, um, so, you know, IPAs. I had some people telling me on my video reviews, you don't like IPA, so why do you even make videos about it? I was like, what? What are you talking about? And they were saying, oh, yeah, you're always downgrading these IPAs, and you don't understand the style, and you don't, you can't appreciate bitterness and blah, blah, blah. I was like, no, you got it totally wrong. You got it totally wrong because my complaint over the last five years with some of the IPAs was that they were poor quality. Mm-hmm. I said, I never said I didn't like the style. I said, if you look at all the India Pale Ale videos I've done, I bet you the score is in the A range, somewhere in the A- minus to A-plus range for all of them total, you know, the average. Sure. Even the ones I'm complaining about, sometimes I'll give it a high score. But I said, look, I found that over the last five to six years that there's been a deterioration in the style because right. more and more of them are starting to taste like canned pineapple. Mm -hmm. And I don't mean dull canned pineapple, like the store brand, Kroger, 
<laughs> you know what I'm talking about. Yeah, I don't know. Like the value priced pineapple, cane pineapple. And um and I said, you know, that's a problem because I'm sitting here paying and I've drank IPAs for a long time, you know, about twenty years. So um and there and I said, What about the bitterness? What are you talking about? I was drinking IPAs twenty years ago and the bitterness never bothered me, okay? So don't don't bring that up, that's incorrect. Mm -hmm. It's it's not the bitter thing. It's a flavor problem that doesn't work right. Balance. Yeah. Right. It doesn't balance. And it's not even a balance. It's now the one I just drank and the one you talked about and the one Rod J talked about, those had strong fruit, but it and it, it, but it was like almost like fresh fruit, and it was um, bitterness, fine, you know, bitter. Okay, we understand what bitter tastes like. Bitter mm. is not a new uh, taste in your mouth, okay? So I don't know why people are going berserk over bitter. It's like, man, you never heard of bitter? That's a common uh, part of food, bitter, <laughs> right, or drink. Right? <laughs> uh, so, um, but if I'm paying, let's say, nine ninety nine for a six-pack of India Pale Ale that tastes like canned store brand private label pineapple. Right. No. When I could have just bought okay Pabst Blue Ribbon <laughs> or uh, $4.99 a six pack of pint cans, I'm gonna get kind of mad. Yeah, I'm gonna start complaining because you know. <laughs> yeah. I think I think value has its place. Yeah. Sure. Sure. So I, I just want to bring it up because I've gone through this for a year with some of these people, round and round, and they're telling me I don't like IPAs. And I'm like, why? Well, why am I giving this a hundred, like basically a hundred out of a hundred? If I didn't like IPAs, I mean, right. it's crazy. Right. Like you did it begrudgingly or something. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, I've said yeah. on video. I have said on video there are styles I do not like. Yeah. Right. Wheat and, and that's all, and that right, and that's all part of it, you know, Ron. And people, you know, people start to see more reviews and stuff. And you know, we can't satisfy everybody. I mean, I know I do thousands and thousands of wine videos, and the one thing that I always had the biggest problem with are the oaky uh, chardonnays from California. And trust me, I I was in the same boat as you were. I got harassed because I would say this thing is over oak. It tastes like a piece of wood and stuff. People go, oh, what are you talking about? It's supposed to have a little. Well, yeah, it's supposed to have some, but when you, uh, you know, when you go ahead and you fermentate it in an oak barrel and then you add oak chips into it to make it more of a flavor, you know, you're really starting to get nothing but a, you know, I could go to, uh, um, you know, Menards, buy a piece of lumber. And soak it in water, and then not and have the same effect as some of the Chardonnay. I mean, so I get what you're saying. I I hear you, brother. And um, you know, like I said, what you're right. Your style is what you know. You like bitterness. People either you do or you don't like bitterness. But it's all in the you know, it's all in the way people perceive what is bitterness and stuff. You know, and you may think that a, you know a hard bitterness. It's bitter when some people think a light, tiny bitterness is what you're, you know, oh, my God. Right, and know. I don't care how bitter it is. I've drank beers that are 100 plus IBUs, the most bitter beer on the planet, and those are fine, and they don't, they're they not that harsh. I don't care what people say. Right. My right. is about stuff that tastes junky. You know what I mean? Right. Junk. It's like, and I don't want to keep beating a dead horse. It's like, no, I can go to the grocery store right here and buy a can of sure fine pineapple for 79 cents. Yeah. And it'll taste like a store brand private label pineapple. It won't be bad. It'll be fine. But it was 79 cents. Am I paying $4.99 right. for it? No. 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 So that was All the right. point. Like, I don't want to play. I, I, my complaint was I'm tired of paying premium prices for value priced quality and and, and 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 I think the problem is that the IPA market is flooded right and I've talked about upper level mediocrity you right. can try 20 IPAs and they're all in the A range but neither one none of the 20 are more remarkable than the other 20 okay so 
there's that's not a problem for me because I'm drinking 20 beers and they're all scoring an eight. So I'm like, this is awesome. This is all, but they're not remarkable. So that's why I called it upper level mediocrity. Mm-hmm. Right. Right. But then people jumped on me for that, saying, "Oh, you you don't like you don't like them." I said, "I gave it an A." But right. Uh, but well, on the other hand, there are some, and I don't want to name brands. I could name brands. I, I know some brands I could right. point out right now and really go after. Yeah. But they 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 they're 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 um they're inferior. They're not good. Excuse me. They're not good, but they're claiming to be good. But well, I guess you run into that with wine too. They'll claim to be all these things, and you, you taste it, and you said, you say, well, yeah. uh, this is this is not good. <laughs> well, that and that has to do with a lot of the marketing. You know, people really don't know. People are really guided by marketing. You know, by the marketing, marketing. And there's some people, you know, that sit there. And again, not naming names, there are some wines that people go, oh my God, this is the best wine and stuff. But yet you compare it to others, and it just isn't anywhere close. And but yet everybody loves this other one because of all the marketing. Yeah. All right. Well, this bitch session was uh, sponsored by uh, you know Dole's and Kroger. So <laughs> well, dude, <laughs> Rod J. Rod J's not getting any promotional piece from them. Sponsored by Raging Raging Bitch Brewery. <laughs> There's only a beer name that out there. So. <laughs> um, tune, in, tune in next week when Pats were ribbon in, in Goose Island. Go ahead and talk to Crunch and Roger. <laughs> Roger, I know we can't bring this up in Crunch. We can't really bring this up. Another thing, right. we got another night, is like this whole thing about English India Pale Ales versus American. Sure. Yeah. I've, heard, I've heard so many people, they'll rip on British IPAs. It's a different style. They shouldn't. Yeah, they're saying, these damn British, they don't know anything about IPAs. And I'm like, what? <laughs> nah. And I'm like pulling my hair out. I'm like, they invented the style, man. Well, now you see, mm-hmm. like, now you see the purpose of my monologue earlier in the beginning when I started. With my preamble, there's three right. different types that are looked at, and these are the differences. So... You know, the, the point that you brought up, though, there, Ron, was interesting because that's one of the bases that when they interviewed John Taffer months ago on his, on his story talking about how he saw, like, 50% of breweries may fail over the next yeah. year because they're putting out inadequate beer. Um, some of the beers you taste, and we've talked about it on some of the ones, like, where I go to do beer runs out of Trader Joe's here, I've got some of the local ones from Trader Joe's that were better than some of the ones being sold out there as a premium. That's a real um, problem. That is a real problem. It is, and, and that's because some people, in my opinion, don't know what they're actually trying to make and what they're titled. And I drank a beer that was labeled as a different style. I forgot what style it was, but it was closer to an IPA than anything. I think you may have seen that video, Ron. I was talking about, like, this doesn't even match up to what it should be. Everything about it is more like an IPA. So... All these people are putting all these breweries together, and it's great to see the explosion we're having in craft brewery, but it has to be done where we're not losing some of the value out there so that people are putting good things into the marketplace. And the big thing is, like, this knowledge of it, the fact that people are saying stuff on how you're reacting to some of the beers and the bitterness. I mean, it's just you taste bitterness. You taste the different things you have on your tongue from the different flavors, from sweet to spicy, all that kind of stuff. So... Chances are these people may not be actually feeling that. They say the average guy has 10,000 taste buds. The average woman's like 12,000. Some people aren't going to catch all the flavors. Your palate is going to be different. Some people just are going to miss that boat. So if you've got 200 people that see your video and one person or two people react to it, that's just a small number. Everybody else is probably catching on to what is going to happen. So right. not even worth sweating those people. Right, and let me say this. I have no horse in the race, Okay. I don't work for a brewing company. I get no money from breweries except for, okay, a little – every now and then I get money from Miller Coors to do some uh, brand development with them. Mm-hmm. But I'm talking about a $5 check. Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> but they do – like they do send it to me. and they. But mainly what I do with them is they uh, – when they're coming up with a new uh, label design – can right. and bottle designs and cartons and they're uh, 30 packs and all they'll send me pictures they'll send me pictures and they'll say well what do you think about these new labels and um, 
and stuff like that. And so, okay, so you might people might say, well, you work for Miller, you work for Miller. Well, if you want to call that work for Miller, okay. <laughs> Obviously, that's. But other beyond that, beyond that, I have no horse in a race. Okay, so I don't care who wins and who loses. I just want to drink it. I, I'm a consumer. I'm a right. customer. Right. I buy it. I drink it. I do my little videos. Big deal. Right. So right. look, if the beer, <laughs> I, I'm going to be quiet after this. But if you went to Smith and Walensky's Steakhouse, right? Right. <laughs> right. Let's, say you, let's say you went to Smith and Walensky, but it tasted no better than Armour Vienna sausage. You're going to be pissed. Yeah. Yeah. Man. yeah. Although I'm not trying to disparage Armour Vienna sausages, it's fine, you know. But you, you, but you know what I'm saying. It's like a, yeah. there needs to be some kind of a. It need. Well, you don't want to pay. You don't want to pay for a Cadillac and get. And I was ranting and raving about that with all these new these uh uh, uh new Belgian beers. Mm -hmm. I was just so mm -hmm. angry. You know, it was like the new Belgium shift that lager they made. Yeah, my new Belgium shift is a gourmet craft lager. And it costs a lot of money relative to other loggers. And I said, well, well, I said, this is not even as good as Coors Banquet, okay? So I said, yeah, okay, I have a problem with this beer. Well, you know. Well, and, that, and, that's the way, and that's what you should, Ron. You give an honest opinion. Now, here's the, here's the fact, okay? Um, I, I'm in the same boat as you. I don't work for any distributors or nothing. I give my reviews, and that's you know, and that's what it is. I've had, uh, you know, I've done reviews where I've taken wine or the beer, and I poured them out, and I said, this is shit. Now, there are 7 billion people on this planet. Now, I'm going to guarantee you that you're only going to go ahead and get a following of maybe 100,000. But you know what? You want those 100,000. Because the other ones, you know, are everybody's got their own uh, palate, their own taste. Rod, you know, said everybody's palate and thing. Your palate is basically, um, you know, mature like by your upbringing and stuff. I tell people because I was raised on a farm that I like, you know, with my wine and stuff. I like that barnyard taste. And people from the city go, "Oh my God, that barnyard taste!" And they think of, you know, horse manure, horse poop, stuff like that. And it's actually that wood. That I used to, I used to pull the splinters off the darn uh, the barn door, and I used to chew on that wood, and that moldy, musky, you know, yeah, it had horse hair flavoring to it and stuff like that. But I like that because it brought memories back for me, and that's what I like, you know. And I tell people, I ask people, you know, when I do uh, reviews, I say, oh, this has got a mosberry, you know, mosberry uh, flavor. How many people know what the fuck mosberry flavor is? Nobody's even you know had a mulberry, you know. Most nah. people have not had. Them. So yes, I, I've, you know? often, um, I've often remarked that I liked a lot of these British beers because they tasted and smelled like cellar mold. People say, there you go. because my grandfather had a cellar, a bomb shelter he built. It was actually a bomb shelter. He was worried about a world war, and um, he used to yep. store. It was really damp down in there and um, like moldy, and he would store potatoes down in there. Because it was kind of cool, even if it was hot in the summer, and and those British beers, and I guess it has something to do with England. They, yep. they kind of have that, and American beers never have that, you know. So um, it's just something I remark about. So you have to you have to like you're saying, look at it from your own reference point. But well, no matter right. what reference point you're looking at it from, and I watch Rod J's videos, and I can see that he's thinking the way I'm thinking. You can pick up, and and, and this is oh, what, shit. Yeah, the theme of my videos. Yeah, the theme of my videos is always not is it a style that I personally like, which is irrelevant. Mm -hmm. is, right. is it a quality? So I base it. Is it a quality? The whole question is: Is it quality or is it not quality? And you can tell that usually pretty fast. Mm -hmm. um, right. Sometimes they're off track on the style, which is a bit of a problem. But I have a bigger problem with quality. You know, quality. There you go. But and here's the thing. And here's the thing, Ron, is that people who are thinking the same way as you are going to follow you. And you know what? You're the one giving them the uh, right track and the right advice and stuff. And the rest of them, you know, they can just sit back and bitch all they want. And you know, that's what they have yelled for. They can just sit back and bitch. So they don't bitch. Yeah, 
and most and that little gang puts a thumbs down on every video, but I know who they are. <laughs> yeah, and that's fine. Hey, and gonna, that's fine. If you get a hater, that means you're doing something good. So <laughs> <laughs> the haters motivate. So you know, <laughs> for the first time, I had a thumbs down. It's like, who the hell gave me a thumbs down? I'm like, you know what? Fine, give me a thumbs down now. It's like, just move right through. I've got a lot more ups and downs, so I'm happy. Right, right, right. There you go. Oh, there you go. We're from the we're from the Rod J. All right, I like that. All right, Ron. Ron, we, we went ahead and we uh, we heard your, about your first one there. We uh, we heard the uh, little session in between there. What do you got for our second IPA? You got a second one you want to uh, show out? I don't have a second IPA, and I do have to. Okay. Get, I do have to get off of this because I have some things I have to take care of. But um, not. Nah. And nothing bad, but um, just, I, mean, nothing, I, I mean, there's nothing bad happening. I just have to get some stuff going. But um, I appreciate Rod J inviting me. I really, yeah. and Rod, I, Rod J, I've watched your videos for quite a while now, and I've been very pleased with them. Well, thank you, and I've viewed with yours as well. And I appreciate you watching. I really do. Yeah. And uh, every uh, every Thursday we were doing this, unless there's some type of mix-up. So you're always welcome to join us Thursday night. I know you got your thing Wednesday night. So right. if I don't join a lot, it's nothing against you. It's just that, like, I do the Wednesday night, and then Thursday night I'll be like, oh, I don't really want to miss the Cubs game or the football game. You know what I'm talking about. And then oh, I yeah. And I'm oh, gonna get right, I'm, right. Gonna, I'm gonna get on one of your Wednesday night. Last night I had Boy Scouts, so mm -hmm. I am going to get. Right. Wednesday night ones here at some point too. Right, and I appreciate it. You're welcome anytime. And then, um, well, and before I'm, you leave out, before you leave out here, Ron J, uh, why don't you go ahead and give people like me who don't know your website and stuff? Why don't you give a little shout out to your website so we can follow you and stuff? What's your website? <clears throat> it's not really a website. It's uh, it's on YouTube and it's um, Ronald Terry. Okay, well, name. what is it? But a lot of people know me as Louisiana Beer Reviews. Right. Louisiana Beer Review. All right. All right. Well, we'll go ahead and we'll hook that up, and, uh, you know, hopefully you'll get some more followers and stuff. You'll definitely get one here. I'll definitely, uh, you know, link you up on that and uh, check out some more of your reviews. I mean, you have a lot of great insight, and like I said, I appreciate everything you said tonight. Ron, Thank you, Ron. Information. I appreciate it. Hey, I appreciate you joining, Ron, for sure. Definitely. <laughs> And I'm glad to have met uh, Mr. Crunch. I appreciate that. Um, um, it was nice meeting you, sir. And thank you. I a pleasure meeting you. I'm glad for uh, you not taking me too far down in the hole. I was going. I'm glad you were down in the hole. Those things happen. I've, I've, uh, <laughs> I, I do that probably three or four times a week. Um, <laughs> But, uh, that's why. That's why I got. That's why I got Rod J on my show here. So, so you know, when I'm when I'm sinking, he just pulls me right on out. <laughs> but if you see that Falstaff icon, if you see that yeah. Falstaff beer icon, that's usually me. So, all right, we all have a very nice night. You too. Uh, thank you very much, buddy. Okay. Bye bye. See you, Rob. So, Crunch, you want to go next, or you want to? Oh yeah, yeah. I got a stone. Go IPA. Oh, nice. So this one here, yeah. I was uh, happy to see this one here. Yeah, the go-to. You know it. You know it. And uh, this baby's here. I, you know, I've had a couple of stones before, and uh, I really enjoy, you know, uh, their beers. So I was really happy to see this one. You know, was available in the uh, build your own uh, pile. Okay. So, uh, definitely going to go ahead and that pour it out nicely. Look at that. Nice. Nice on that one. Oh, yeah, that's very nice. Yeah. Well, I'm really liking this new camera. Uh, this new camera I got here, uh, you know, nice and bright. It wasn't you know, not as bad as that other one. You know what? And, uh, knock on wood, we haven't had any issues tonight either. So, it might be, it might have been the camera. It might have been. Uh, it could have been, yeah, it could have been because I'm still on, uh, I'm on Chrome, I'm on, uh, you know, Google Plus. So I am on the Chrome, I am on Chrome Plus, so, you know. So, okay. All right, well, this one here is a uh, kind of a light straw, a uh, little, little, you know, a little light golden color there, not as uh, dark orangey as the other one. Right there, got a nice little uh, foam head on there. 
not as frothy as the uh, you know as the uh, Hapapalooza. I kind of like just saying that Hapapalooza. <laughs> Does that uh, one have the? Does that uh, one have the ABV listed? For the uh, stone, let me see on the stone here. Yeah, the stone here. Let's see if it's got the ABV. Yeah, it is four point five. Oh, okay. So it's kind of more down towards the session level. Yeah. That's all right. That's your go-to. That means you can do it all day long. Crunch. Did we lose Crunch? Hello, hello. Oh, just when I said he hasn't anything happened to him, he froze up for the first time tonight. I put the jinx on him. Crunch, come back. Well, we'll give Crunch a second here. Seems like he locked up on his Google cam. Um, find out what's taking place. So we can shoot him a message. Let him know he froze. And then let him jump back in. But hopefully you're all enjoying the talk we're having with the uh, IPA beers tonight. If you have any questions, you can definitely let us know as well. Um, you can actually... There's a Q&A feature on YouTube and also on Google+. Or if you're on Periscope, you can also go ahead and chime in as well. So let me go ahead and pull that up here. But it looks like he's actually signing out and signing back in. And it looks like he's about to be back on board here. But yeah, the IPA area is a nice, fun area to enjoy some beers, to get involved in, to really see what's uh, out there. And as we talked about earlier, the styles they're coming out with are just growing exponentially because there's so certain things they can do to maybe mix up some of the things together, combine some different things, and do some things to really build that category. So I guess a question would be is if they get to a point where there's too much out there, if it becomes too redundant, um, that you really have too many IPAs and some people would say yes there's too many IPAs out there right now some people would say no there can be um, more IPAs so it's just a matter of opinion along those lines but definitely a class I'd always recommend to check out if you're an avid beer drinker especially if you do like hops it's a nice area to really enjoy some beers too so Crunch, I think, is signing back in. I'm going to wait for a second or two before I open mine. I'm actually going to be talking about one here from uh, Boat Swing. Uh, it's actually Rylander Brewing Company. It's their Boat Swing American IPA. Mine is actually coming in at a 6.7% ABV and then also 79 IBU. So it's actually one that's kind of pushing the IBU level more than even the ABV level um, at seven at at 79 IBU, you're usually out of that American IPA area, but it is what it is. The brewers put stuff together, and we just go out and we drink it. So um, looking forward to definitely testing this out. And this is one I actually picked up when I was at uh, Trader Joe's and checking out some of their beers on a beer run. It was one of, their, one of their house brands. Figured why not give it a shot. It was a good little value-type price beer. Not going to fully expect a lot out of it because – I don't know, uh, they've been hit and miss on some of their house type things. But, you know, if it's something where it offers a nice little benefit or kick, then that'll actually work out great. So I'm going to go ahead and look forward to actually checking that out here in a second. And it's like Crunch is having a little bit more trouble than I thought. So the Boswain IPA, as you can see here, nice 22-ounce bottle. I figured tonight's the game night. We've got the uh, the basketball game tonight, starting with the uh, finals. So I'm going to be planning to watch some of that and figure why not have a nice size beer to go along with it. So I'm going to go ahead and open this baby up, take a look at this one, and then we'll figure something out when Crunch gets back online. Wow. 
So that will pull well, you were you were just giving me props and everything about the new camera and everything like that. I knocked on and yeah, like that. I knocked ah. on wood and everything, and then bam, it happened. I told the people, you know, just when I did, ah. you know, is that that old jinx like that kicker never misses a field goal, and then as soon as you pay, <laughs> he misses the first one of the year. So <laughs> there you go. There you go. There you go. I, I opened mine up too, and <laughs> I was running out of space. Right. Today, I guess, but um. You're still getting your camera up, it looks like. So I can hear you. I just can't see you yet. Oh, okay. Well, I don't know. If I don't know. My camera's here. Get the camera. I mean, you got a nice profile shot down there that pops up, you know, holding the wine and everything, but it's just nothing on video. <laughs> right, right. Uh, yeah, I don't know why that's happening. There you go. Oh, there you are. All right. All right. Yeah. All right. So you go ahead and talk with the stone, and I'll wait, and I'll do the boat swing. That's the one I have here. Yeah. So, uh, like I said, you know, this one here, you know, it's a light straw. And there, the head you know, already went down a little bit. So, uh, but um, your camera went out again. There you are. Now you're back. Okay, no, go ahead. No, no. I'm back. back. Yeah. All right. So there we go. So yeah, we got a uh, really good grape. This is big grapefruit smell on this one here. Really big grapefruit on here. Yeah. Yeah, it definitely, uh, you know, it's got the uh, greenness. It's got the grapefruit in there. Very light. Uh, the head is, uh, you know, kind of, you know, dying down on there. The lace isn't hanging in. But like you said, uh, you know, it's only a uh, 4.5 percent, you know, ABU. So, you know, it's kind of nice. Let's get it a little taste out so we get on the palate. Oh wow! Yeah, I get a lot of great fruit on this flavoring right here. That definitely got that. You know, really good. I, you know, I, I'm going to really probably kick myself in the ass for saying that, but it really got with that Ron, what Ron Jay was talking about, that, you know, that pineapple, you know, from the can. Oh, gotcha. Really? Type type flavor. Yeah. Yeah. This is, yeah, this right here, good to for what it is. Uh, it's just not my style. It's not my style. Um, you know, when presented, and uh, you know, be okay. But yeah, that uh, that pineapple, you know, flavor thing. But it's actually to me, it's more of a grapefruit. Okay. I like the pineapple is a little older. Grapefruit. Um, yeah, the grapefruit's more there. It's just not my. It's not my taste, unfortunately. Um, wow. Uh, let me, let me, let me, yeah, let me just give it a second. Yeah. It looks like you're enjoying that one. Yeah. Now that one there for me is going to be around the, uh, you know, 2.2. Ooh. Ooh. Wow. <laughs> yeah. Unfortunately, yeah. I don't know what it was. I mean, I had some good stones before. Yeah. Yeah. But this one here, and like I said, you know, which is the guy right there. Wow. You know, it just it has got that it has got that grapefruit or like Ron Jay was uh pointing out, it really does, if you think about it, after hearing about it, you think about it, it does taste like a three day old can pineapple. Right. So yeah. Unfortunately, uh, not my style. Not my style, man. But uh, you know, hey, I'm I'm batting fifty percent because I like my first one. <laughs> well, there we go. Two point yeah. two on the Stone Go To IPA. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Wow. Did not expect that from a Stone beer. Yeah, no, not even I. I was actually excited about having that. <laughs> well, the one the one that I opened up was actually. 
It's the Boat Swain American IPA. I was telling everybody earlier when we were waiting for you to get back on that. It's actually mm-hmm. from Rhineland- Rhinelander Brewing Company. And this was one I picked up on the latest run. Well, actually, the time before last on the Trader Joe's for a beer run. Kind of their house brand. And this is actually not too far. Well, it's another state, but not too far from you. It's from uh, Wisconsin up in Monroe. Had not heard of this brew oh, before. Oh, Monroe, yeah. okay. Um, and it says both, sw- both Swain beers are unique beers made in small batches. Our American IPA has a sweet maltiness from the roasted barley and crisp bitterness right. from the high hop level. So you contrast that versus what we talked about early in the show. You know, American IPA is supposed to be more fruity versus the English IPAs. They like they actually took a different swing on theirs and went back to kind of more of the English type, trying to put some of the maltiness out in front instead of the fruits. Now, oh, okay. it opened up with a nice two-finger head, um, nice white color head. The color on it was a nice, um, pretty much golden orange. It was like your first beer. You really can't right. see too much through it. It's very orange looking when you put it up there. When you get it to the light, it still stays very opaque. That you know, I'm not seeing the carbonation as much as I was when I had the uh, pine drops, pine drops from the shoot. And I'm not even trying to smell right now. And I'm getting basically a syrupy sweetness out of the glass, which is different for me to experience with an IPA. I'm not too sure how much, you know, if it's going to be a bad like second round like you had on yours there or what, but it's kind of interesting. Right. I mean, it's just kind of like this, this sweet syrupiness. You know, it talks about the maltiness on the label. It's almost like that smell of the Werther's candy growing up as a kid in your grandparents' house. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Kind of like that wrapped into the syrupy smell that you receive. Kind of like a butterscotch toffee or something. Oh it's different. I wouldn't if you were to give me this in a blindfold, I would think this might be more like a barley wine than it would be an an American IPA. That's just how different it smells. Now the IBU on this one nice. um was actually 79 versus you know, we said before like 40 to 70 usually, so it's definitely over the IBU level. But the ABV is down around wow. 6.7, so that fits about right as well. But it's definitely a unique take on that. I mean, it's kind of a kind of a candy type sweetness with it that's kind of making it a little bit different. I would go in thinking this was something, mm-hmm. like I said, more like a barley wine or something along those lines. Um, not expecting to be in an IPA, but let's see the mm-hmm. taste. All right. a little bit different first thing i actually noticed is that it's got got a wateriness to it so my ipas i like a little bit more stronger and not as watery a little more dry this one is a little more watery in there even at 6.7 percent it's got a creaminess in the texture smooths out well on the back end you get a nice IBU hit to the front of the tongue, but it's not a heavy. So the IBU that I had on the Deschutes is actually feeling stronger than what this one actually is. And this one has a wow. higher IBU. So it's really smoothed down by the maltiness. Hmm. You can definitely taste some of the booziness in the background. You can tell it's got a little bit of a, a kick with it. Very, like I said, The taste is very reminiscent of something you would expect on a barley wine as well. Kind of that little bit of a medicine type taste, that tangerine type thing. Yeah. Oh, yeah. okay. Yeah. But I get a nice tingling up around the lip area inside the lips, really feel the sensation working. Doesn't get up into the cheeks as much, but it is there somewhat and really to the middle of the mouth. So when flavors are getting around, the duration is kind of nice. I'm getting a good amount of that flavor kicking around for a little bit. Carbonation is there, but it sits nicely on the tongue. Um, overall, it's not a horrible beer. Now, keep in mind what I told everybody with this, like being a house Trader Joe's. So this was a right. two ounce bottle that I'm actually drinking right now. So I think I got this bottle for like two ninety nine, and this gets back to when we were wow. talking about the value points earlier. Um, I've had right. name brand IPAs that aren't as smooth, maybe on this one at some points. But they have different taste profiles on other things. But this is one that's not actually that bad. That you could say you could pick one of these up and actually be pleased with 
for what you're spending, like Ron was saying earlier, and still enjoy yeah. it for that price. So as far as how I look at this as being on the drinkable scale, on the ratings, I think it is definitely drinkable. I'm not going to say solidly drinkable because I think it's going to be dependent on what someone may prefer. I think My somebody opens this up as an American IPA, they're going to be disappointed kind of on what it actually turns out to be. But it is something that can kind of pass as a drinkable beer. I don't think you would do a, a sink pour or anything like that with it. Um, so for me, I'm actually going to give this one probably 2.75. Um, I think at 2.75 puts it kind of in that C plus level, kind of where you would want like a value beer to be. Um, like I said, because of me liking a lot of different types of beers, I can sit here and enjoy this. But I think if somebody went in expecting to have like one of the other IPAs like we've talked about, they'd be kind of disappointed on what they may receive a little bit. So, uh, okay. but, but the scale that I look at is usually based on just the drinkability of a beer. And I think it does hold enough drinkability there. Um, but I would definitely, I, would, I mean, I would like to find out why they marked it as an American IPA just because I think it goes against what some of the rules are. But then again, we talked about how the growth is taking beers in different spots in IPA and, this might be right. the way they'll go. Might be a new multi-type IPA that a lot of brewers are tinker with. So, in that sure. regard, sure. you know. But yes. Well, so. maybe also. So maybe also though, uh, you know, because Trader Joe has what's also known in the wine industry as uh, a wine called Two Buck Chuck. Now, Two Buck Chuck is a uh, you know it's their own house brand wine that mm -hmm. they have, and you know they they run it stuff. It's right around that same price point, it, or yeah, the same, uh, you know, ratings and stuff that we're talking about. It's not too bad. It's not, you know, you're not going to be up there with the open swan, but then again, it's not going to be down there with the uh, yellowtail neither. It's right. going to be kind of up there. You're okay, but there's, it's not going to be like wild off your socks, you know, out of that. So maybe you know, with this right here, kind of falling in that, uh, you know, same, uh, you know. Yeah, you know, same area. So, you know, I mean, kudos for them because you know there's a lot of uh, people who if that that hits their spot, right. whether it's the drinkability spot or whether it's the price point spot, right? It hits their it hits their spot. So, yeah. But yeah, so that's the uh, the boat swing in America. I got a few more of these in different categories. I got to try. I got. I think some in the porter or stout and then something else too. So like I said, it's not bad. Like I said, 22 ounce, 299 to experiment with. You know, if you find out you like it, you save a few bucks, you got a little thing you can just stash away. So Right. right. Is that something that could you know build somebody up to uh, a next level? Right. I mean this will be some somebody that likes barley wines and IPAs will probably enjoy this a little bit more like I do, that you kind of okay. This could be a one that can like kind of lead you to the barley wine area. So if someone wanted to go think about trying barley wine, this is what right. might be a nice fit for that because it has those same type of characteristics. Um, oh, okay. Where you kind of okay. get away from some of the IPA to get into that other area. So oh. not bad. I mean, it's got a little bit of lacing there on the glass too. So, you know, like we know, people think they're drinking fine wine and then they pull the, the – uh, the tag in a blind contest and they find out it was actually a five dollar wine or something. So Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So people aren't as great as they think they are. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, know. No. I know a good drink if I have it. Yeah you do, you know? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well it, it, it all is by selective, you know. Um, you know, what's good for one person may not be good for another. And you know, yeah. that's why we do this. I mean we have done this on the show where we had the same uh, beer and, uh, you know, we tried it out, and you gave it, you know, a uh, high rating, and I gave it a low rating, yeah. vice versa. So, and, you know, that's just the way it goes. You know, so that's, you know, that's the variety of it. So, that's good. Well, Mr. Raj, are you going to explain to the, uh, the um, craft beer gone wild of the whole uh, facial uh, thing here? <laughs> It's starting to kind of look, it's starting to look like, uh, you know, the, the Stanford and son here. Yeah. Wow. Stanford and son. <laughs> <laughs> He's got jokes. <laughs> <laughs> well, the reason to come by here. The reason to come by. Yeah, I need to, I don't know what I'll do with it. Actually, they're renovating my office downtown. 
So, oh, so I mean, we don't need to shave to go no, ice. So we don't need to shave in the morning. Yeah, yeah. So then, you know, work from home for a few weeks or so, and I was shaving the first few days. Like I don't have to keep shaving, so I stopped shaving for a little oh. bit. Got to kick back and just toying around with the beard now. And you know, you got to have that wow. get that beard in for a little bit. Like I actually, you know, know something about craft beer because of all the beer guys. But, uh, <laughs> <laughs> but but yeah, when I go back to the. Uh, to the professional suite, I'll have to shave it at some Ooh. point. Yeah, yeah. To so. the corporate, to the corporate yeah. world. Oh, I see. So, so <laughs> us here, so, yeah. So us here in the beer venture, in the beer venture, uh, you know, uh, nation here, we, we get we get the we get the raw raw J. <laughs> uh, we get the raw raw J. All right, all right. So. Well, for the rest of us uh, beer venture, uh, you know, nation people, yeah, we see how we 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 say we see the love, yeah. we see the love right there. All right. Yeah, I'll probably I'll save it off at some point, but if you don't have to, why do it, right? I mean, yeah, exactly. one of the, I think one of the things is just like drives me crazy sometimes having to shave, but you know, yeah. I don't want to yeah. older than I have to, so. <laughs> That's right. That's right. I don't, want, I don't want to do the just for men, you know, because then you're really a man. <laughs> uh, you do the just for men, like you've accepted that you're older. So <laughs> there you go. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> but if I can stop growing on top of my head, I'd be happy. I hate. I, I usually shave that down. So it's there like, you go. Guys that go bald, they don't want to go bald. I'm. I want to go bald, and I can't. I keep growing hair. So <laughs> there you go. But um, some good beers for sure that we've uh, taken a look at tonight. Yeah. And again, you know, next week you'll have the opportunity to pick what style we want to go with, and you know, there's so many different right. things out there and different subsets of it. And it's good having Ron tonight. We were supposed to have another person on, and she actually had to go to San Francisco, so she'll probably join us next week. Um, right. Have Cody back probably next week. He had to work tonight, and. We got a few other people that are definitely interested in joining. We got a couple people across the pond, we can say, that are looking at joining. Which I guess over there it's like four in the morning or five in the morning or however many hours they're ahead of me on the East Coast. So, you know, one more hour than they are with you there. So it's like that's dedication. That early really to to jump on. <laughs> this will be technically this will be the breakfast club. Yeah, I need so, a, I need a uh, or something. <laughs> <laughs> Join us next week when we find out when we find out what goes great with uh, grits and uh, yeah. and you know beer. Yeah, combination. I've got a few people in Canada that are interested in joining us when they can. So you know we got some pretty good opportunities good. out there. We're gonna be pulling some different people in. Anybody out there that wants to look at coming on, talking about beers and talk about what they're enjoying, everybody's always welcome. So. Right. We'll keep yeah, going. always, uh, always feel free to uh, you know pop in and hook up uh, you know Rod J Beer Ventures. Uh, you know, go ahead and send him an email or uh, you know hit them up on Twitter and stuff. He'll definitely get you know respond to you. We're always glad to have people in and uh, join. As we saw the last couple of uh, videos, we had people jump in from you know what we had. We had now South Dakota. We had um, you know, Louisiana. Yeah. So. And uh, now we know we're not going to be sponsored by, uh, you know, Kroger's. No, we will be sponsored by, <laughs> by Dole. Dole will not be sponsoring us anytime soon. So, but, but we love everybody else. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but we're not, like I said, we're not tied to anybody, so. That's right. <laughs> But uh, well, all right. Well, I'm Chris Christmore here in Chicago, Illinois, and Rod J out of the Cincinnati, Ohio area. And like we always keep saying, keep drinking crafty beers. Cheers. Cheers.